All right, guys, welcome back to episode four of the hydroponics versus aquaponics trial. I just want to say thanks, guys, so much for your positive feedback, all your support. And believe me, I'm just as excited as you guys to see actually what transpires. So let's have a quick look to see where we are and how much these plants have grown. Right now we are on day eight, approximately. I'll double check it. We're about eight days into our trial, eight, nine days. Um, so let's see how our plants are progressing. We're gonna start here on the hydroponic side. Now it is very, very, very warm at the moment. We're again midday. It's important to see plants at different times of the day. Um, they were looking really great this morning, but they are struggling a bit with the heat. Um, and as you can see, uh, the color is really good. Uh, so I'm very, very happy with that. The one thing we did pick up was a few aphids coming through. Um, so what we've done there is treated that or sprayed it with pyrrole. Um, and now it looks like most of them are dead, but I'm going to do a video next week and show you how we do the mixes, how we do the concentrations and try see if we can get on top of that life cycle of those pests. All right, but otherwise they are still growing. Uh, one thing you will notice with my roots, they're not as white as they were before. Now that is because of the heat. Um, as I mentioned, I will not be surprised if this water is regularly getting up to about 30 degrees Celsius. And that is because of the way the gutters are going to warm up. My water reservoir is very low. And so I'll be very, very curious to see how the root development on the aquaponic system versus the hydroponic system is looking. But uh, having said that, let's get our nutrients checked, uh, get our nutrients up to where we need them to be. And also, uh, while we're at it, we'll just double check all of our calcium levels, potassium and nitrates. There we go. Okay, let's have a look. My reservoir is nice and full. Uh, the pump cover here, still in, in good condition. It's not hindering the water flow at all. So let's just have a look at what my EC is sitting at. Okay, first of all, temperature is sitting at 29 degrees. That is, like I mentioned, very, very warm. Um, and it is on the warm side for the plants. So they are gonna go through stress during the day. And that's important just to take into factor throughout this trial is that if you're able to control that environment um, it is very very difficult especially on hydroponics because of the low water body but having said that my EC is currently sitting at one so let's go ahead first things first and get my multi mix Shimon in here and remember I'm aiming for about one and a half uh, between one and a half and two for my EC to be sufficient now, because this contains potassium, I am not going to be adding calcium today. Remember, calcium and potassium bind, you never add them at the same time. So because I'm adding my multi-mix today, I'm leaving my calcium aside. I'm going to add that next week. Superb. All right, so I've got my EC back to where I want it. Uh, it's sitting at a very healthy 2. I've seen a nice little drop in my pH there, uh, sitting at just under 7. Uh, so that is okay. If it goes above 7, obviously I want to just make sure I bring that down. So my EC is stabilizing at about 1.7. That's exactly what I'm looking for. All right, but I do have my Laqua Twin tester set here. Uh, and so what I'm going to do, because it's so quick and easy, and that's what I love with these test kits, you pay a lot of money for them. Um, so please, if you get it, make sure you look after it. But because it's quick and easy, um, what I'm able to do is uh, very easily check that my nutrient levels are where I want them to be. Okay, so this is the first one I'm doing. This is my salt electrical conductivity. Now, please bear in mind, this is testing purely for salt. Now, the big difference with salts is because of a lot of my nutrients do contain a salt in them, we want to make sure that my EC to salt ratios remain in balance. The salt should never really go above one. The moment my salts go above one, 
that is going to impact my plants. So even if my EC is perfect, but my salts are high or too high, you're going to have to do a water change to get those salts back down. But uh, right here, I am very happy with that. Um, it is still below what it needs to be. So the next one I'm going to do is my nitrate. Obviously, I have done my dosing. As you can see, I'm expecting it to be nice and high, and that's because it is uh, my nutrient mix does contain nitrate sitting at 390, uh, going up now to about 400. Uh, you've got to make sure my nitrates don't go above 500. In hydroponics, guys, not aquaponics. Uh, please do not get confused. My nutrient management on the two systems is completely different. My next one, calcium. I did dose my calcium last week. If you remember, I pushed it up to about 60, between uh, 200, between two and 300. Uh, as I can see here, my calcium has dropped right back down to 64. Now, I'm not, and I can't add that calcium today. That I must remember to do next week before I do my next multi-mix dosing. Okay, the next one I've got here is my conductivity. I've already tested it with this meter, but I'm gonna double check it and make sure that this meter is still testing accurately. Now, I've got a nice accurate reading that matches my other meter. So that's just a very quick tutorial. Doesn't take long, but the importance of calibration is incredibly important. Once again, I'm just going to highlight the difference between these two pens because uh, it is very confusing. A lot of people buy salt test meters thinking it's an EC meter. Um, but please just remember my salt EC is specifically detecting my salts versus my conductivity is testing my general conductivity. So if my salt EC gets above one, I'm going to have to do a little bit of a water change to keep that down. So that's just so you understand the difference between those two. My last one is potassium that I'm going to check for. Now, if you remember the ratio between calcium, potassium and nitrates, my calcium is a lot lower than my potassium. So when I dose, that is my target number to get it up to again. Between that 150 to 250 is normally the ideal amount of potassium. But because I've put my multimix, it's got the right amount in it for my system. So I was expecting that to be all right. You would have noticed uh, one major difference. Uh, we've actually just turned the system around and the reason we've done that was the same on the hydroponic side uh, the top row was getting a little bit too hot so um, having a look here plants are looking really good uh, my water flow uh, across all the gutters looks really really good and neat and consistent uh, so I'm, I'm very happy with that I can see straight away that I am uh, notice noticing a little bit of magnesium deficiency so when it comes to identifying a deficiency in a plant uh, very often what you're doing is looking and comparing the new growth versus the old growth on the leaf and seeing where the yellowing starts it's very easy to get confused between a nitrate and iron or magnesium deficiency but what I'm going to do is put some info in the comments below in the detail section below uh, and next week I'm going to spend a lot of time really explaining how to see that. But from my experience I know straight away that I'm going to have to add a bit of magnesium in here. Uh, so I'm going to go add that uh, onto my dosing bucket just now. However, what we can also see is these plants are nowhere near as uh, wilted as the, the hydroponics. And that is because the system is that much cooler. The, the water in this whole system is still running at about 24 degrees. Celsius and that's making all the difference to the happiness of this plant. So while the top of the plant is exactly the same heat as my hydroponics, 
the water is significantly cooler and that's also resulting in a much healthier root development on the aquaponics interestingly I also have less pests now I can't actually see any aphids on this lettuce at all and the only thing I really would account for that is that the plants are a bit healthier going through a little bit less shock during the day with temperature changes and all the rest um, but what I'm going to do here now if we have a look I'm going to and we just compare the hydroponics side by side with the aquaponics uh, so what I'm going to do I'm going to take one of these plants and we're going to take it around to the hydroponics and we're going to start getting a bit of an idea around which is actually doing better now uh, in the next video I will do it nice and early in the morning and then that will give us an opportunity to see it when the the plant is just a little bit perkier and not as grumpy as say some of these so what you can see here on my left this is the aquaponic lettuce now once I've done that dosing for magnesium we're going to get almost the same color so it's the same crop and you can see here the color differences and deficiencies coming through so that's the first one root development as I mentioned much much healthier on my aquaponics plant I mean they, those roots really look absolutely fantastic and health and size yeah the aquaponics is a little bit bigger than my hydro but uh, my hydro is looking healthier in terms of its color All right, so I'm going to get this one back and on my way um, I am going to take the two things that I needed to dose today some iron and some magnesium so the magnesium I'm using here is Epsom salts also known as magnesium sulfate and magnesium is basically one of the most critical components or elements uh, for plants to be able to uptake uh, nutrients and photosynthesize effectively so here I've got 250 grams of Epsom salts and I'm going to be adding 500 grams of, of iron. Now on Monday, we're going to have a much better viewpoint on what difference has this made. So I'm going to start here with my Epsom salts. Bring all 250 grams in there. And I'm also adding uh, 500 grams of iron into the system. My iron is still sitting at about 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Ideally, I need to get it to 1. So I'm going to be increasing the amount of iron. And it's also just a good thing to remember uh, later on in the day when I come do my checks. I'm just going to make sure that is nicely stirred up. Anything that's settled at the bottom, just lift it back up, agitate it, let it get into the system. So you can see here, uh, that's that color there is predominantly my iron coming through and that magnesium. And I can promise you by tomorrow, we're going to see a big, big difference in the coloration of those plants. All right, guys. So that's it for this week. Uh, please make sure you... Uh, hit the subscribe notifications all the support you can give us we really really appreciate it uh, we'll be back with you next week Wednesday with the next update thank you